Namaste, Kiaora and good day friends. Uh, this is Yugal Parashar, editor of the Indian News. Friends, we have with us today uh, Brooke Van Walden, Act Party List MP. She wears many hats. Uh, she is party's uh, deputy leader and she is also uh, holding uh, uh, portfolios of uh, spokesperson of housing, foreign affairs, uh, health and trade. And she is also uh, Act Party's whip as well. Welcome to the Indian News, uh, Brooke, and how are you this morning? Oh, well, thank you very much for having me here. Um, it's a wonderful morning. I've just been out visiting some of the local businesses out here in uh, West Central Auckland sure. and really hearing what's on the minds of people so that we can get businesses to thrive and grow because that's how we get a good economy. So it's really good to be out in the community hearing what's on people's minds and hearing how we can potentially take that back down to Wellington and let the government know what's on people's minds because it's only through representing people and hearing their stories that we can actually make better laws and help people have a better New Zealand for tomorrow. So thank you for having me here too. Yeah, very correct. Now before we go any further, uh, would you want uh, to tell our viewers a little bit about your journey? Uh, how did you enter politics and why that party only? Well, I'm part of the ACT Party because I believe it's the only party in Parliament that truly believes in good public policy. Um, you know, you can have many different reasons for why you want to be a politician. I think in a lot of cases, some of them aren't good reasons, yeah. you know, um, maybe that's for being in a position of power or wanting to change a particular type of law. Um, or sometimes you have people who are there for 30 years and don't achieve anything. Um, but for the ACT Party, it's all about public policy. And that goes back to how do we create rules which make it easy for people to live their lives? And how do we create rules that make businesses thrive um, and get government out of the way? And that's why I joined ACT. Uh, one of the main reasons for me joining the party in the beginning uh, was freedom of speech. You know, I'm uh, an environmentalist and an economist. And one area when I was going through university that I didn't like was this feeling that you couldn't express yourself. Um, and if you wanted to challenge a particular policy or an action of the government, um, people said, oh, you're a bad person or you're an evil person or you shouldn't, you shouldn't disagree with something. Yeah. Um, I really want to have good debate and a good contest of ideas because I think that's how we create a better country as we actually openly talk about ideas and that's what I found in the ACT Party and that's why I joined. Sure, that's a very good answer. Now, uh, Brooke, uh, what's your party's uh, take and uh, views about the recently announced uh, Labour government's uh, cost of living, uh, uh, you know, that support which they are offering to the people who don't even live in New Zealand now? Oh, well, I think um, it is a little bit of a joke, really. I mean, we have people who are really struggling in New Zealand. I yeah. think that's, that's really fair. And I can see why the government decided to do its handout. But the ACT Party also acknowledges that people are doing it tough. There is inflation. Yeah. Every time you go to the supermarket, it costs more. Every time you fill up the car, it costs more. Even childcare costs more. But the problem is that they're fixing the solution by giving someone a handout by saying if you earn under a certain amount of money we give you money and the act party says no we want to help people who are struggling but we want to give people back their own money so we would give people a tax cut so we're taking in less money for the government so that there's more money in your own pocket and i think that helps set the agenda that people feel like they're getting rewarded for their efforts rather than relying on the government to help them. That's how we see the difference. And I think, um, like you say, there is an issue with people who are overseas yeah. uh, getting the payments. Yeah. Um, that's the government not even just being okay with splashing the cash in New Zealand. They've decided that they want to splash the cash in other countries too. Yeah, they're splashing money on everything possible. They are, they're splashing money and we've seen so much wasteful spending yes. and it's the wasteful spending that's actually led to this cost of living crisis. You know, we have inflation through the roof because of government spending and it's the government taking in all of this debt, paying out billions of dollars on projects that have no results. 
um, that's causing costs to go up because we have a set amount of goods and we've got more and more money that the government's been spending to buy the goods. So all of the prices have gone up. So the government has created the problem and now they're trying to find a solution to their own problem that they've created. And so ACT just says, let's just hold back. Let's stop this wasteful spending from the government. And we've found billions of dollars that we wouldn't need to spend. Uh, and then we wouldn't need to find more money to pay for it. Do you think this is one of the major reasons of this all-time, uh, in fact, uh, rather than 30 years of all-time high inflation, uh, is because of this uh, wasteful spending of government? I think it has added to it. I mean, there is inflation in other countries too, and the government is right to, to recognise that. But if you look at the US and the UK, where they have both rampant inflation, yeah. there is something in common. And that is that both of those countries also printed and spent an awful lot of money. Uh, we're talking about trillions of pounds and trillions of dollars. Yeah. And what we have in common is that the government and the Reserve Bank also printed billions of dollars and they spent billions of dollars and splashed it around the economy. That is what we have in common and they're seeing rampant inflation and so are we. Okay, now I realize you recently uh, presented a private member's bill in the uh, parliament. Uh, it's about uh, fixing this housing issue of New Zealand. Would you want to explain it a little bit uh, to our viewers? Uh, what, how does it work and how do you think it can really fix the problem, such a big problem of this country? Yeah, I'm really excited to have had my members bill drawn from the ballot. Yeah. Not every MP does because it's done by luck. Yeah. Uh, and my members bill is to try and help the housing crisis. And we know that there are people with families, young people in particular, who are really struggling to buy new homes. Um, and we want to give a bit more certainty and future to our young families in, in New Zealand. Yeah. Um, but the housing crisis is an infrastructure crisis. Um, there is a lack of homes being built because we don't have the infrastructure that connects those homes to communities. And we've gone and talked to builders, architects, the councils, planners, and they've all said that the housing crisis is because of infrastructure. Uh, councils don't have the funding that they need to connect all these new homes that are popping up to the local community. And so the ACT Party says if we want to incentivise councils to get homes built faster, to get through those processes that we know take a really long time to get homes built, we need to incentivise councils. Yeah. Because the only time a council is efficient is when it hands you a parking ticket. <laughs> and that's because they know that they get revenue from them. I 100% agree on that. <laughs> so if we gave 50% of the GST on every new house that's built in an area to the local council that that house is within that area from, uh, we would see around a billion dollars a year up and down New Zealand going to local councils uh, to help them with water, sewerage, roading, even libraries, all of the vital infrastructure that we need to connect a home to a community. And I think that incentive that the ACT Party is putting out there would actually see councils instead of saying, no, nope, that sounds difficult, that sounds like a more cost for us, that new home that's being built will actually cost us money. It is, thank you for building a new home for a new family. And we now know that we have the money we need to help connect that home to the community. Sure. Now, Brooke, um, um, I, think, I hope the better sense prevails and the government takes some of your points on board and helps the new home buyers. Uh, where do you see ACT Party in 2023? Well, I certainly hope that we see ourselves in government um, and that would be with the National Party as a big player. Right. Um, but what I don't want to see is that we simply change the letterhead. You know, we end up with not having Labour and we end up with National and Act. Uh, and we have the same policies. That's not what I want to see. So instead of just wanting to change the government, the Act Party wants to change the direction of the country. We want better public policy. So that's what we're putting forward. We've put forward, I think, seven uh, policy documents this term alone. Yeah. And we're going to continue fleshing out what policies we can see to make New Zealand a better place in the coming months. 
um, and especially in the election year. And our hope is that a strong ACT, uh, with people voting for ACT rather than just national, we will see us going into an election with a real platform for change. Not just changing the government, but changing the direction of the country. Because I think New Zealanders need hope. You know, we don't want to see more and more of the same, and we don't want to be labour light. Sure. Now, uh, Brooke, uh, I'm sure your party and you must be aware the Indian subcontinent community makes a very sizable uh, number in the population of this country. Uh, I think 250k plus, uh, to be precise. Uh, what is your plan to make inroads in the ethnic community, apart from the Indian subcontinent community as well? Uh, but your party is uh, trying to, you know, have some um, ethnic faces uh, in the next uh, elections or you have some plans like that? Yeah, well, I would love to see people from across the board, from any ethnicity, wanting to stand for the ACT Party. I think what's really important is if you care about your community and you want to be a voice for your community uh, and you believe in, you know, freedom of speech, you believe in freedom of association, uh, small government, less bureaucracy, uh, and you want an efficient, effective, productive economy, yeah. um, joining ACT, putting your name forward uh, and wanting to be part of our movement is the first step. And I want to see more people from the Indian community, uh, from all ethnic backgrounds, wanting to join ACT uh, so we can get that diversity across Parliament. Um, but for me, it's more important that we have diversity of ideas. Yeah. Um, I don't really care what background people are from. I believe that we all have an equal stake in society. Um, and, you know, I've got a mix of ethnic backgrounds myself. Yeah. To me, that doesn't matter. I mean, uh, really most of your prospective voters, uh, especially the, from the ethnic communities, may want to have some face from within their community. Mm -hmm so they can relate to that person and they can actually have a faith or trust in him, like the him or her that they can take their issues to the government or to the parliament. This is what my question actually was. So are you actually offering people to join the party or you have some plans that we can uh, include some ethnic faces in next year's election? Well, I would ask people if, if you want to see uh, people from your own community representing you in parliament, um, that needs to happen through joining a political party, yeah. uh, from becoming engaged in politics and putting yourself forward. That's the only way that we get people. Um, I would love to see people uh, from the Indian community wanting to join ACT, wanting to join as supporters and putting their, self, putting their names forward uh, to be a representative in Parliament. Um, but importantly, we must believe in the ACT Party's values. That's true. Um, but also, from my own perspective, like I say, I don't believe uh, our ethnicity in any way um, should promote us or detract from our ideas. And so from my own perspective, I would love to um, be more engaged with the Indian community and come to events and hear your concerns and how we can represent you in Parliament as well. Um, so I look forward to being more involved in your community um, over the coming years. Uh, your party leader uh, believes um uh, he has described it a few times that you are the future of the party. Your take about it? I think David is being very kind. Um, in a serious sense, I have been part of the party for a number of years now. I've yeah. stood in two elections um, and I've been the deputy leader. Yeah. Um, so I suspect uh, I will be here for many, many years and I sure. think that's probably what he's playing at. Um, but I look forward to representing people across New Zealand for the foreseeable future. Well, that was a great answer. So, friends, this was uh, Brooke Van Welden uh, for you, the Act Party List MP. And that's all from the Indian News today. Uh, thank you very much for watching us. Thank you for your time, Brooke. Oh, well, thank you for having me.